Hey guys, it's Mr. Smith here, and in this video, I want to go over the answers to question two from set two of the 2019 AP Macroeconomics free response question. So uh, this question has you looking at the foreign exchange market trade, uh, some of the last things that most AP teachers get to in AP Macro. So hopefully it was fresh in your mind if you took AP Macro uh, in the spring. And so the first part of this question says, the European Union and the United States are trading partners. If the current account balance is zero, will an increase in the United States' real income result in a current account surplus, deficit, or no change? And explain. And so we notice right away that this is a multiple choice question in part, but we do have to explain. Now, when I'm reading this question, and I don't know about you if you, if you did this uh, question for your AP exam, um, but it's not abundantly clear if they're referring to the current account balance in the European Union or the current account balance in the United States, because depending on which of those you're looking at, that's going to change the answer here. So the way I would have approached that um, was just being very specific in my answer. So I'm going to approach this from the United States perspective, but you could just flip it around to do it from the European perspective. Um, if you wanted to. So uh, in the US, this is going to lead to a current account deficit. And the reason why is because US, um, I'm gonna go and put deficit, I'm gonna go and put in the US here just to specify that so the AP reader knows that I'm looking at it from the US perspective. So US consumers will purchase more European goods increasing imports. So the primary, uh, the primary thing in the current account is the trade balance, right? And that's the difference between your exports and your imports. Well, if the U.S. consumers have more income, more real income, they're going to spend more on European goods. And so more European goods are going to come into the... Um, into the uh, United States, and that's going to result in more imports, which is going to be a negative trade balance or a trade deficit, and therefore a current account deficit. And sorry if my A got a little race there. So that is the answer to letter A. On to letter B, and letter B says, okay, now go ahead and draw the foreign exchange market for the euro, and then on your graph, uh, show the effect of the increase in the United States real income on the value of the euro relative to the United States dollar. And so let's go ahead and draw that graph here. We can make it nice and big. And we're gonna go ahead and put quantity of euros. And then we'll go ahead and put dollars per euro over here. And then we've got demand for the euro, supply for the euro. And so the question is, What's going to happen here due to the increase in income? Well, if there's an increase in income in the U.S., the U.S. wants to – U.S. consumers, they want to buy more European goods. But to do that, they need the euro. They need that currency. Okay, So they're going to increase their demand for the euro because they need the euros to buy those goods. So it's going to be demand to the right. And then all you have to do here is show the um, – uh, exchange rate here, E and E1. And so you can see that the dollar, or sorry, the euro is going to appreciate in value relative to the dollar because we have now a higher uh, equilibrium exchange rate than we, bid, than we did before. And once again, you have to show it on the graph because the verb was show. So you could not write it out to the side. And finally, on part C, it says, okay, now assume instead that interest rates increase in the European Union. And so for CI, it says, what is the effect of the increase in interest rates in the European Union on the demand for the United States dollar? And so they're being specific here with demand or supply because, in, remember, with interest rates, it's a double shift on both, on both markets for the euro and the dollar. And so they're being very specific here on what they want. So it's demand for the dollar and we have to explain. So we're gonna go here to C1 and the answer here is that the, uh, the demand is gonna decrease. Uh, 
And the reason why, I'm going to go and explain it and then I'll write it out here. Um, if there is an increase in interest rates in the European Union, that's going to mean that investors want financial assets that are in the European Union because they're going to give them a higher rate of return, which means conversely that you know, investors are like, I don't want that really low interest rate in uh, America for their financial assets because I'm not going to get as much of a, of, a, of a good rate of return relative to what I could get in the European Union. And so to uh, write that out, what I would have put was something like this. Europeans will purchase less American uh, financial assets as they will, they being the assets, uh, will yield a lower rate of return. So something to that effect, just saying that, you know, Europeans are going to, these investors, they're going to go where the interest rate is the highest because they want the highest rate of return. And so because that is now in Europe, they don't want um, as many American financial assets. And so they're not going to want the dollar, the American dollar, the United States dollar to go get those assets. And so in C2 is just a follow up here. Well, if there's a decrease in demand for the dollar, and that means the dollar is going to depreciate in value. And uh, just drawing a, a, a supply and demand graph, the foreign exchange market, you could see that, but you don't have to here. Just writing depreciate would be enough. So that is all for this video covering question two of set two of the 2019 AP Macroeconomics free response questions. Until next time, have a great day.